the epistle for this 15th Sunday is taken from St. Paul's letter to Galatians chapters 5 and 6. Brethren, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be made desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Brethren, if a man be overtaken by any, in any fault, you who are spiritual, instruct such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear you one another's burdens, and so you shall fulfill the law of Christ. For if any man think himself to be something, whereas he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every one prove his own work, and so he shall have glory in himself only, and not in another. Every one shall bear his own burden. And let him that is instructed in the word communicate to him that instructeth him in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For what things a man shall sow, those also shall he reap. For he that soweth in the flesh of the flesh also shall reap corruption. But he that soweth in the spirit of the spirit shall reap life everlasting. And in doing good let us not fail, for in due time we shall reap not failing. Therefore, whilst we have time, let us work good to all men, but especially to those who are of the household of the faith. And then the Gospel, taking that according to St. Luke, chapter 7. At that time, Jesus went into a city called Naim, and there went with him his disciples and a great multitude. And when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, a dead man was carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a great multitude of the city was with her, whom when the Lord had seen, being moved with mercy towards her, he said to her, Weep not. And he came near and touched the bier, and they that carried it stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he gave him to his mother, and there came a fear upon them all, saying, and they glorified God, saying, a great prophet has risen up amongst us, and God has visited his people. Thus are the words of today's Holy Gospel. And the Father, the Holy Ghost, amen. Today is 15th Sunday. After Pentecost, we're traveling to the battlefield of Pentecost, preparing for the great victory of our Lord Jesus Christ and the coming of the judge on the day of judgment, which will be the 24th century of Pentecost. We're in the battlefield, and today we begin to read the book of Tobias in the Holy Breviary. And Tobias, we mention very often as a great saint of our times, that we are in the time of troubles, the time of tribulations like Tobias, and if we want to go through these tribulations, we have to follow the example of Tobias. And so we'll read here what's in the Holy Breviary this morning, in the first uh, nocturne of the Holy Breviary this morning, on the book of Tobias. So not from the Holy Mass, but, all, but from the Breviary. Beginning with Tobias chapter 1, the very first. Tobias, of the tribe of the city of Nephtali, which is in the upper parts of Galilee, above Nahasin, and beyond the way that leadeth to the west, having on the right hand the city of Sephet. When he was made captive in the days of Salmanazar, king of the Assyrians, even in his captivity he forsook not the way of truth. But every day he gave all that he could get to his brethren, his fellow captives, and that were his kindred. And when he was younger than any of the tribe of Nephtali, Yet did he know childish thing in his work. Moreover, when all went to the golden calves, which Jeroboam, king of Israel, had made, he alone fled the company of all, and went to Jerusalem to the temple of the Lord, and there adored the Lord God of Israel, offering faithfully all his first fruits and his tithes. So that in the third year he gave all his tithes to the proselytes and the strangers. These and such things like did he observe when but a boy, according to the law of God. But when he was a man, he took to wife Anna of his own tribe, and had a son by her, whom he called after his own name. 
and from his infancy he taught him to fear God and to abstain from all sin. And when by the captivity he with his wife and his son and all his tribe was come to the city of Nineveh, when all ate of the meats of the Gentiles, he kept his soul and never was defiled with their meats. And because he was mindful of the Lord with all his heart, God gave him favor in the sight of Salmanazar the king, and he gave him leave to go whithersoever he would, with liberty to do whatever he had a mind. He therefore went to all that were in captivity, and gave them wholesome admonitions. And so the, there's, that's as far as the bravery takes it this morning, and then, so just a few considerations. So, Tobias, he is the great warrior of our times. Remember that Solomon told us, there is nothing new under the sun. So there is no battle, no experience, no situation in the church that we can experience that has not already been experienced in the sacred scripture. All things happen at the cross, and all examples are there. Now Tobias, he is going to be a great hero in the remainder of this book of Tobias. He is going to bury the dead. And when the king Salmanazar dies, the king that follows him does not, is not like Salmanazar. He is a very wicked king. And he decrees that all the Jews that die in Nineveh, the same city where Jonas would preach, all those would die in the city of Nineveh, the Jews that died there who were in exile, that they could not be buried. And it's interesting now, just one of the relatives of, uh, of Father Pankras, a priest in, in, in Kentucky, 81-year-old priest in Kentucky from India, one of his relatives just died a couple weeks ago. And they were not, he was not, I forget if it was a man or a woman, I think it was a man, but he was not allowed a Catholic burial. He wasn't allowed any present, anyone present for his burial, because they claim it had something to do with the coronavirus, or that it might be. So they took his body and they burnt it, and then they, they didn't burn it completely, because it's too expensive to do that. And so they then took the body and they threw it in the ground, and there was not one person present, of, uh, of, no priest was allowed to be present, no one was allowed to, to be for the death and burial of a Catholic. This also happened last week in the Philippines. A tricycle driver died, and they said he thought he had coronavirus. He died of kidney disease. They took his body and they burnt it, and they would not allow a priest or anyone to be present. Then they discovered after he had been dead for three days, he did not die of the coronavirus. He died of his kidney disease. But they said, oh, we're sorry. Meanwhile, the man's body was roasted, and he was not allowed Catholic burial. We read in the book of Tobias, it's interesting how everything that happened before happens now, happens again. You can't even receive a Catholic burial, can't have a priest present. It's already happening. And why is it they do that? Because they want to make sure that as much as possible that the vast majority of souls when they die, they already go to hell. But they want to make sure with the Satan that more go to hell. And hence, there is starvation of the dying. They are not fed. And then they die in a kind of despair. Food is all around them, but they're not able to eat. They're not able to have a priest present. They're not able to have their families present. And they die alone. This facilitates dying in despair, making it easier for more souls to go to hell. Then, the devil hates the human body that is a temple of the Holy Ghost, that is made in the image and likeness of God. And the devil hates God. Therefore, of all the creation that God made, what the devil hates more than anything else is a human being. He hates our face, and therefore he has it covered with a mask. It is a sign of Satan when you cover your face with a mask. You should not cover your face with a mask. Unless, unless someone puts a gun to your head and requires you to do so. This is a sign of following the devil. And this is what's happening in our times. They cover the face with a mask because the devil hates the face. And then what do they do? When they die, they separate from the family, separate from the priests, and try to bury them. Is this new? No, the king of the Assyrians did this 700 years, 800 years before Jesus Christ was born. And who went along with it and did great wickedness? What caused Tobias to have a life of tribulation? When Tobias was very young, who caused him trouble? His name was Jeroboam. And Jeroboam is the grandson of Solomon. His father was Roboam. 
And Roboam was a great-grandfather of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great-grandfather of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And Roboam was a most wicked king. And Roboam, what did he do? He built temples of false gods in Israel. And he was the head of the Holy Church, the same church to which we belong. And so it is not, we should not be shocked that the head of our church, Pope Francis, and before him, Pope Benedict, and before him, Pope John Paul II, and before him, Pope Paul VI, all had worship with pagans. I don't understand why they're blaming Pope Francis on the Pachamama. They always have to something easier to pronounce. Too many, it's like Peter Piper, 50 Piper, 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 Piper. Now the fact is that they, they say, why is it that he had the, the, this Pachamama, and, and we're scandalized at that, when, when John Paul II worshipped with many pagans, not just one pagan religion, he had the uh, poop put on his head in India. He worshipped with the voodoo pagans in, in, in the Caribbean. He worshipped with the Muslims in, 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 in Rome. And then Pope Benedict did, this, did worship with all of them, just like John Paul II did in the prayer of Assisi. And Francis hasn't done that yet. And we're so scandalized at Francis. This is a blasphemous scandal, in my opinion. A blasphemous scandal. Why are we scandalized at he who has done less evil and not scandalized at those that have done more? Now, Pope Jero now Jeroboam was the head of the Holy Roman Catholic Church of the Old Testament. He was the head of the Jewish Church. He was representative of God. Remember, God became angry when he said, when the Jews said, we no longer want a prophet to lead us, we want a king to lead us. And God said to him, all right, I will give you a king. And your kings will destroy you, and your kings will chastise you, and your kings will torture you, and your kings will do great evil. But these kings are going to be the representative of God. Why did Tobias, the young boy, have to go into exile in his youth? Why was he captured inside of his own land of Israel? And why was it? Because Jeroboam built false gods, and Tobias would not have anything to do with it. He was the youngest of the tribe of, of Naphtali, a very young boy, a very young man. And all the elders went to the false gods, but to Tobias refused. He refused to participate in the false worship that was given to him to do by the true head of the Holy Church. Does that sound familiar? It is exactly what we are experiencing right now. Pope Paul VI, the true head of the Holy Church, commanded by lies and by deceit and not by the proper law and manner of the Church and against the law of God, but he still commanded that we throw out the old traditional Mass and that we have a new, a new uh, evil celebration called the Novus Ordo Mise, the new order of Mass, which is straight from hell and is displeasing to God in every way and leading souls astray. It is a false worship of the true Church, and this false worship was created by whom? Blessed by whom? The head of the church. Who caused Tobias the young man to suffer? Who caused Tobias the young man to be in great difficulties? It was the head of the church. The grandson. The grandson of Solomon. The great grandson of David. His grandfather was Solomon the wise. Jeroboam. His great grandfather was David the great and holy king. He would have known Solomon he would have, he knew, he knew, of course, he would have known and dwelled with David. He would die before, David died before he was born, but he would have known Solomon, and he knew his father, Roboam, and Roboam turned away from God. And what does it tell us in the sacred scripture? Jeroboam committed the sins of his wicked father, Roboam, only he added more sins besides. And the same is said of his son and the next king. And therefore, when the history of the New Testament is written at the end of the world, it will say, Paul the sixth. He was the head of the Holy Church, and he committed great sins. And his son, John Paul I, John Paul II, John Paul I died too quickly. John Paul II, he did the same sins of his father, but he added many more besides. And his son, Pope Benedict XVI, he committed the same sins of his father, and he added many more besides. And then Pope Francis committed the same sins of his father, and he added many more besides. And this causes persecution of the young Tobias. And what does the young Tobias do as he is in great tribulation in his youth? Before he marries, he was made captive in the days of Salmanazar, the king of the Assyrians, of the great sins of Jeroboam. And every day, he, what did he do? 
He gave all he could to get to his brethren, to his fellow captives that were of his kindred. And when he was younger than any of the tribe of Nephtali, yet he did no childish thing in his work. Moreover, when all went to the golden calves, which Jeroboam, the king of Israel, had made, he alone fled the company of all. He fled the company of those that worshipped the golden calves set up by Jeroboam, the head of the church. And what did he do? And he went to Jerusalem to the temple of the Lord, and there adored the God of his, Lord God of Israel, offering faithfully all first fruits and his tithes. Here it is made very important. Remember the very first priest. His name was Cain. The first priest that God ever made after Adam. Adam, of course, was the first priest. But the first priest ever born was Cain. Why was God displeased with Cain? And why did Cain become a murderer? And why did Cain commit the sin of envy against his fellow priest, Abel? Because of the sacrifice of Abel was pleasing to God, whereas the sacrifice of Cain was displeasing to God. Why was Cain angry? Why did he be filled with envy? Very simple. He did not give his first fruits to God. This caused the very first murder to happen in the history of our world. It caused the very first murder. That was a murder committed by a priest. And what was the origin of that murder? He did not give of his best to God. Now let's come forward to the 21st century. Do we give of our best to God? Do we give our first fruits? Do we give what we have to God? Do we give it to the God in two ways we give to God? We give to God by giving to the church. We give to God by giving to the poor. Because the Lord Jesus Christ said, when you do to the least of these brethren, you do to me. And he who takes care of the priest takes care of me. He never said who takes care of their children takes care of him. He never said who takes care of their friends take care of them. In fact, he said specifically, when you take care of your children and when you take care of your friends, do not the pagans do this? Now we should take care of our children and it is good to help our friends. But the pagans also do this. That is what the leaders of the wicked world do right now. They take care of their friends. If you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. How do you have a good mafia? You can set up your own mafia. All you have to do is take care of your friends. And you can set up your own godfather. And you can set up your own mafia. Just take care of your friends. But the Lord Jesus Christ said, taking care of the widow and the orphan, this is how we give glory to God. And he also said, take care of the poor and take care of the church. Now, what are we supposed to give to the poor and give to the church? We are supposed to give the first fruits. We are supposed to give of our best. And here, notice, this is what Tobias did. Tobias, in his preparation for becoming a saint, and he would have a son whom he gave his own name. And he did not only give his son his own name, he taught his son his own spirit. He taught his son his own ways. And he taught his son, fear God rather than men. And then Tobias needed a wife one day. Just like in our resistance movement, in our little traditional Catholic movement, here's a young girl, and I remember one parish, in a parish she said, Father, I can't marry anybody because everybody is my relative. There's nobody to marry. Everybody is a relative. And the other ones that aren't relatives, well, they're losers. They're not marriageable. So what are we going to do? The fact is, what did Tobias do? Tobias knew his son needed to marry. In the Old Testament, remember, everyone had to marry. It was the rule of the Jews because the duty of the Jews was to prepare for the physical coming of Christ. Therefore, they all had to marry. And therefore, what did he have? He knew that Tobias had to marry. But he could not marry anyone in Nineveh. He could not marry any of the ladies that were there. There were two types of ladies there. There were Jewish ladies there, and there were pagan ladies there. He could not marry pagan ladies because they were not of the true religion. And he could not marry Jewish ladies because they were not worshiping the true God as they were supposed to. They were not going to the temple. They were, giving, they were, they were eating of the pagan meats. They were eating with the pagan meats. They were living like pagans. And therefore, Tobias said, No, you will not marry one of these. Does this sound familiar? What must a Catholic father and a Catholic mother do in our age? Son, you will not marry any of the local girls. Daughter, you will not marry any of the local men. But God will find a way. We will find a way. There is someone you can marry. That's why, for instance, last week in Kentucky... 
we have the Young Adult Gathering. We do each year a Labor Day weekend. So every weekend, every year Labor Day weekend, we have a Young Adult Gathering. Gathering together. Last year was about four, over four, the 40 of us there going around. We went around Louisville, Kentucky to look at, and we were, the Black Lives Matter was supposed to be having a massive riot there. We drove down the streets in our little, in our bus, and these streets were completely empty. We even drove over to the Kentucky Derby, and uh, you could never go to Kentucky Derby. I'm from Kentucky, and we, 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 well, the Kentucky Derby was something you could never get close to, 150,000 people. We drove one block away from it, one hour before the derby took place. Six o'clock was the derby. We were there at five o'clock with our bus, one hour, with one block away, and there was a massive chain link fence, had to be a million dollar fence, that they put all the way around the entire stadium, and the entire parking lot, everything, and there were about 150,000 cops that were there at the Derby. So the police were all there, and there wasn't one person, even the locals were hiding in their rooms because of the rumors of the, of the Antifa and the Black Lives Matter riots. We drove the streets, we talked to some of the police, there was nobody anywhere. And they claimed down in the, in the east and the west side, there was some little bit of a riot going on, and, the, and the, we, saw the, we saw the cameramen come in, park in their downtown Louisville, then go to that side and take pictures. Because when they're doing these riots, there was only a few people rioting. They're only in one small area. But they take the cameras, and we saw them go with their cameras. We didn't see any of the rioters. They were down, uh, we looked all the way down Broadway, Major Street and the Broadway, and Muhammad Ali, and, and the major streets there in downtown Louisville. Nobody to the left, nobody to the right, nobody to the front, nobody behind. It was like driving down the street at 2 o'clock in the morning last week. When there's supposed to be 150,000 people in the Kentucky Derby, they allowed only the owners to go there. And so that there was a riot, but the riot, we couldn't see it. Couldn't see it at all. I was even making out, I would, we were planning to go with the young adults there to Louisville. I, was, I had a contingency plan in case there was some kind of problem. There was no problem of any kind. And they blow these things out of proportion to make the whole country believe the whole country is up in flames and going in riots everywhere. But there was damage done. Uh, they were trying to provoke the police for some miles down. We didn't see them. We were there nearby, couldn't see anything. But in any case, times have not changed. Tobias lived in the same situation which we are. And what did he do? When he was in captivity, he gave of what he had to his neighbors. Because remember now, Soon, we're going to be losing our jobs. We're already talking about, is there going to be a civil war when, when, the, when the election happens and Trump wins by a landslide once again? He wins by a total landslide. Then they're going to claim that he didn't win. And then they, they're threatening to have the soldiers come out and to, uh, to throw him out of the office and trying to create a civil war and then try to block off the borders of the states and to sort of create a crisis. Will it happen? I don't know, but it could happen. And we wouldn't even think of that a few months ago. Tobias dealt with these things 700 years, 800 years before, 800 years before Jesus Christ was born. What do we do? Let's do what he did. He got captured and put into a camp. They say now the first, uh, the first uh, uh, camp, Safima camps, that are getting ready to be used are in the state of Ohio. Ohio just made a proclamation a couple weeks ago that we are ready to use these camps that have been prepared for many years for those people who are not properly accepting the quarantine. So they now have the first list of those who are going to be put into these camps. So then Tobias ended up in one of those camps. What did he do? He did work of charity in the camp. He took what he had and gave it to his neighbors. Then he got out of the camp. He goes back to Israel normally. What happens? Jeroboam, the head of the church, builds Temples to the false gods, just like the head of our church built temples to Satan. When we're doing all these Novosoto churches that are built in these modern styles and these Novosoto masks, it is not the praise of God, it is the praise of Satan. And the priests are offering a false worship. Inside of the true church, they're offering a false worship. What did, you, what did, what did, what did Tobias do? He fled away from them all. And he went to the correct temple of God. And there he offered his first fruits and his tithes. He offered his first fruits and his tithes. As we are obliged to do in our present situation. And then what happened? Things got worse. He finally got married to Anna. And then he had a child. And then he taught his child. He gave it. He, so those things. But when he was a man, he took her to a wife, Anna, his, of his own tribe had a son by her whom he called by his own name. And from his infancy he taught him to fear God and to abstain from all sin. 
One of them should remember from our parents. Did my father teach me to fear God and abstain from all sin? Did he teach me that from my childhood? And when you have children, teach them to fear God and abstain from all sin. Fear God means to love him. Fear God means to do things with him with his eyes upon you. Fear God means to do things with his, with, with, under his divine guidance and divine providence. And then abstain from sin. How many Catholic families teach that to their children? It is less and less and less. What are they trying to do? You know, you can always have a TV. You can always have good movies. You can always have a modern, uh, modern entertainment and video games. But the trouble with this is the video games are filled with Satan. Besides the fact, besides the fact that they are a waste of time and destroy the mind. And the TV is filled with garbage and garbage teaching. All kinds of garbage teaching. Teaching boys to be effeminate. Teaching girls to be emasculated, killing fatherhood in boys in the time of little bitty children, killing motherhood in big girls by the time by from their little infancy in their cartoons and their teachings, there must be a throwing out of the TV. And don't use the TV as a babysitter. Don't use the TV as a babysitter for children. How did Tobias, when the time the angel Raphael came down from heaven in order to help Tobias? Did that happen because Tobias was being yelled at one day by his wife? No, it happened because throughout the entirety of his life he lived according to God's law. And as he received troubles, like Job received so many troubles, every time he received troubles, he returned back to God. He even tells us the book of Tobias is given to us to help us to understand the great Jew and how he dealt with tribulations. And Job, who was not even a Jew, but came to the true religion and the truth of God, believing in God. But he also was the holy man of God. And that Tobias, Tobias is the great one who stayed with the, with the faith and lived it in his daily life. And then, when it was time for his young son to marry, what did he tell him? You will go and find a one of our own tribe. And that is when Raphael came down. He did not know that it was Raphael. He was blind. And the blind Tobias did not know that it was an angel that came to his midst. He did not know that God was going to bless him and cure him of his blindness. He didn't know that his trials and tribulations were going to be taken from him. And there was going to be a great victory. His wife didn't understand. No one understood. They turned against him. But he remained true to faith. And the angel Raphael came down to protect him. And as we read in the Antiphons... Son, if thou follow the law of God, God will give you great good things. Son, if thou follow the law of God, God will give you great good things. Son, if thou follow the law of God, God will give you great good things. Do we want great good things in this modern age? Then follow the law of God. Fear God. It's still the answer. And Jeroboam led the people of God away from God as Pope Francis is leading the people of God away from God. More confusion is being spread amongst us. What must we do? Continue to go to the temple of God. Continue to offer the first fruits to God. And stay away from sin and those things that lead into sin. And then when the time comes that they come to take some of us away to FEMA camps, and the time comes that they come to drive us into the streets or into the wilderness, and the time comes to take away our goods and our possessions, we will have the grace to be able to respond as Tobias did, to re respond as the saints did, and so it is very important, as we mentioned young adult gathering last week, that even in our age, a young man can still meet a young girl who is a Catholic and going to live the faith. And the girl can still meet a young man who is a Catholic and going to live the faith, the man and the girl. And that it's possible. We still need vocations. We still need young men to be priests. We need young men in our seminary in Kentucky. We're 15, 13 or 15 there right now. We need more. We need, we need, to, to, we need young men that are going to be priests of God. We need men that are going to give their souls to go out to visit the sheep wherever they are in need and bring them Christ and bring them food in the desert. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Simon, son of John, lovest thou me? Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Prove it. Show me thy love. Feed my lambs. There must be a feeding of the lambs. There must be a feeding of the lambs. There must be a feeding of the sheep, even in our age. And we all have to participate in that feeding. The Holy Father is not doing his duty. They are not doing the duty. Like Father Giselle said back in 2012 against Bishop Tissier, Bishop Tissier said, we are the captains, follow the captains. And Father Giselle, priest with me in, in, in the resistance, said, Father, your excellency, when the shepherd 
does not defend the sheep, and the shepherd doesn't do his duty, then it's the sheepdog to fill in the gaps. Whenever you're ready to join us, come. We will be barking. The sheepdog must not stop protecting the sheep because the shepherd has failed in his duty. And the sheep also must protect the sheep. The sheep gather together in a middle circle and some stand on the outside to protect those on the inside. And so that there must be a protection of the sheep. And they must not follow the sin that's mentioned in Ezekiel chapter 34 where, 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 where God says, I have something against thee, thou sheep, for the fat sheep have driven away the lean sheep. And the sheep have come to the waters and drunk the waters and then they muddied the waters with their feet so that when the sheep came behind them they were drinking muddy waters. Why do you muddy the waters? Why do the fat sheep drive away the lean sheep? Behold, I am not only angry with the wicked shepherds, I am also angry with the sheep. We do not want to be sheep that muddy the waters. We don't want to be sheep that drive away the lean sheep. We must rather be sheep that keep the waters clean and try to protect the other sheep and shepherds who feed the lambs and feed the flock and follow the example of Tobias. And on a day that we don't know it, without our even understanding, the angel Raphael will come and he will protect us. Like the angel protected Judas Maccabeus in battle, for Judas went bravely in the battle and fought against his enemies alone. He went against his troops and two angels came beside him in battle and Judas did not see the angels. He only saw the enemy and he fought. And he said, I will not defend, I will attack. Let God be my defense. And two angels came, and they were his defense. And while Judas was walking down the enemies of God, the followers of Antiochus Epiphanes, a symbol of the Antichrist, while he was walking them and destroying them, two angels blocked all the blows and stopped all the darts and arrows that came after him. But Judas did not see the angels, but the enemies saw them. And when Pope St. Gregory the First, Gregory the Great, and, and, and St. Leo the Great, rather, stood out in front of the city of, of Rome, and he stood in his rags because he didn't have his proper vestments, and he stood as an old man in front, of, in front of Attila the Hun, and he said to him, Do not attack this city, but save this city, for this is my city and the city of Rome. I'm responsible for the city, and I must protect it. I don't have an army, but I do have faith. Can you please protect this city? And Totila turned around and ran away. And his soldiers said to him, Why did you run away from such an old man? From such a weak man who couldn't even walk to you, ride to you on a horse, but walked in his own bare feet to speak to you? I care not for that man, said Totila. I have no fear of that man. But I saw above him an angel on a flying, flaming horse. And he had a fiery sword. And he was looking at me, and he wasn't happy. Therefore, I was afraid of that angel, and that's the reason why we're not attacking Rome. We're going around Rome today. And what about St. Clair? Her convent was being assaulted, but what is the state of St. Clair? She was dying. She was not able to walk. So she had herself carried to the wall of the convent, and she had the Blessed Sacrament carried to the wall of the convent, and she spoke to Jesus Christ in the monstrance and said, My Lord, protect my daughters. And at that time, all these Muslims were climbing the walls. Back in the days, the Muslims weren't nice. They were climbing the walls and trying to going to attack the ladies. And what happened? They became blind and they fell from their ladders. So we must understand, when was Claire protecting her daughters? When she was bedridden. When did Tobias begin to be a great man? Not when he was old and blind, but when he was a young boy living according to the law of God from a tribe that no one knows, the tribe of Nephtali. And so it is, David became a great king and a great saint when he was sitting out in the, in the wilderness playing harp and singing to his sheep. And a lion came to kill his sheep, and David put down the harp and he attacked and killed the lion. And a bear came to kill his sheep, and he attacked and took the sheep out of the mouth of the bear and saved the sheep. And then God said, there's a giant that needs to be whacked. Take care of it. And in two seconds, he took care of it. But was it two seconds of preparation? No, it was not. It was a whole life of preparation. He had to sing. He had to love his sheep. He had to be with so much with his sheep that he was forgotten by his own family. And then the battle came. And he won in 30 seconds, whereas his brothers could not fight after 40 days facing Goliath. 
So it is in our times. Right now, as we're getting ready to head into a great crisis, there are some souls that are right now truly preparing for battle. And these souls love God deep in their hearts. They're offering up their headaches for the sake of souls. They're offering up the heartaches for the sake of souls. They're working in order to make this faith be spread throughout the whole world. And then when the time comes, the persecution comes, and the soldiers come in, it will be easy to blow them away. It will be easy to hide and escape. It will be easy to be captured and become a martyr and a saint. And whichever one God wants us to do, it shall be so easy. There shall be no difficulty in it, provided we prepare for the great conflict as Tobias prepared, as David the king prepared. And so we must prepare as they prepared. And then there will be great victory for us. Our God is always going to win. With this we know. But are we going to be on his side when the victory comes? This we do not know. Let us be prepared to be on his side when the victory comes. To be in the arms of Mary, a very safe place to be when she's in a bad mood. You don't want to be on the ground where her foot might crush you with the head of the serpent. Be in her arms. Be in the hands of Mary. Be in, her, be in the place of our Lord and God will bless us. And also a story about starting Mass late. But uh, usually when I was in my normal parish, I never start more than five minutes late, the Mass. But because they don't have many, don't have Masses very often anymore, with our resistance movement, I always hear all the confessions until they get done. And it's good for you to wait an hour late. It's good for you. And it's good to be an extra, a little bit late in the chapel. Extra time with Christ is good. You wait for the movies. Whenever it's a big movie, there's 25 previews. You know, the movie starts at 9 o'clock. You're in there at 8.50, 9 o'clock. Preview 1, preview 2, preview 3, preview 4. And the movie started 40 minutes late. Nobody gets upset. But if Mass starts one minute late, I'm leaving the church. I can't take it. But remember, the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is what we live for. And to start a little bit late once in a while is good. And that, uh, so here in our, because of our situation of movement, I hear all the confessions until they're done, get everything fully prepared, and then we start the Mass. I'm sorry Mass is a bit late today, but it's good for the soul and good for the heart. And remember, prepare for battle as Tobias prepared. We need young men to be young priests. Enter the seminary. Seminary starts in October in a couple of weeks for our seminary in Kentucky. We need souls to be gathered together in order there be sisters also. And then we need also that there be good and Catholic marriages. And there can be good Catholic marriages. There can be good Catholic vocations. There can be blessings in our age. And besides, what young man would want to go to war when it's one million of us and 300 of them? A real man wants to go to war when it's 300 of us and one million of them. More people to whack, more glory, more victory. And so we, must, we always want to be the underdogs in battle, especially when we know that we're going to win. And let's prepare for this battle by being really in the side of Jesus Christ, by following the example of the young Tobias, before he became the great and holy old man who was blinded because he did the work of Christ all his days. In the end, his blindness was taken away. His wife finally understood. His son received the most wonderful wife. The devils were driven out of that woman. She had seven, that she, was, that she had devils inside of her, they were driven away. And her husbands were all killed. But then she finally found the right husband. The first seven weren't good enough, so they were killed. But the eighth one was the one that God wanted. And they had a wonderful marriage. There can be wonderful marriages in difficult times. There can be wonderful vocations in difficult times. But let's follow the spirit of Sarah, who wept. And God heard her prayer. And on the same day that Sarah wept, Tobias the senior wept, and God heard the prayer of Sarah and her weeping, and God heard the prayer of Tobias and her weeping, and his weeping, and he sent down the angel Raphael to connect Tobias senior with Sarah the young. And Tobias junior was the connection between the two of them, and they had a most beautiful and beautiful and holy and happy family in a most wicked world. And we can have a beautiful and happy families in our wicked world. We can have beautiful and happy priests in our wicked world. We can go from house to house like our ancestors did. We can bring Christ to the ends of the earth. But let us be prepared as Tobias was and as young David was. And God will bless us. We bless you all in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.